face. Okay, let's do a little sound check. Make sure you guys can hear me. Okay. Anything not of the light or the divine plan is no longer welcome here and must leave immediately. Calling upon my angels, my ancestors, only of the highest white light and Archangel Michael as I calibrate to the energy of the collective. Amen. Okay, you guys. Today's message. I'm so excited. Thank you guys for waiting. I had a little accident <laughs> right before I went to go live. I accidentally, like shot lotion from like here that way so I was like cleaning up the floor <laughs> so thank you guys for waiting you guys are not here for the drama people are in awe of how you put yourself out there and I got a new concept which is very familiar to my content and the things that I get as downloads from God and things that I talk to you guys about is how you guys put yourself out there and one of the reasons why you guys deal with so many critics so many haters so many people that want to push their opinion on you and make you feel bad for what you're trying to activate in your life is because you're putting yourself out there because you are putting yourself out there and people have something to say about it because they're not willing to do that themselves. Every time there's an issue in the chat, every time there's an issue in the comments, it has something to do with the concept that I am about to introduce to you, which is going to connect with the things that I talk about. So I got this from Anita and she was talking about Cringe Mountain. And so I was like, that's a very, um, that's a very interesting concept because I talk to you guys about this all the time. People that go berserk the sesame street crack magic you're this you're that you're this and it's like i don't i'm not here for that you must have not got the memo you guys are the same you're not here for that and but it's always always you guys always going to be something that you deal with it's not going anywhere it's just going to be easier for you guys to deal with are you picking up what i'm putting down so over time it will just be easier so this is a concept that you guys can also look into and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, that has so much to do with what Brittany be talking about. If you're new here, I'm your bestie on the internet. I am your favorite reindeer, your fairy godmother, your spiritual advisor. I am all the things. I am your favorite YouTuber and your favorite person <laughs> on Patreon. And I'm happy to have all of you guys here. Grab whatever you be sipping on. Grab whatever you be smoking on. Whatever you be snacking on. Grab your little dog, your neighbor's dog, your kitty cat. Grab all of it. I got Red Bull and coffee. Well, we're double fisting over here. So I drew a picture for you guys. I don't want anybody to laugh, okay? So make sure you guys are dropping your amens and your thumbs up. And yes, okay. So she introduced this concept to me, Cringe Mount, and I was like, what is that? What is that? Everybody that is going somewhere, trying to activate something, has to get to the top of the Cringe Mountain, okay? I'm going to try to show you guys my little picture here. This is Cringe Mountain, okay? This is the base of Cringe Mountain. These are the haters right here, right? This is you at the top, bestie. This is you at the top of Cringe Mountain. I'm up there with you. This is the people in Cool Land. That's where you're going. You have to climb through this shit. <laughs> are, you, are you getting it? <laughs> I'm dying. I was like, I gotta draw this really fast before I go live. So the people at the base camp, okay, where is it? down here they're always gonna be like oh my gosh what are you doing it's so cringe Ugh. and i'm like <laughs> order in the cosmic court think about it though especially those of you guys that are entrepreneurs influencers light workers or content creators think about your content when you first started you're like <laughs> you probably have deleted some of those videos you probably have deleted some of those videos or 
we are in the middle of climbing Cringe Mountain. And there's always going to be people at the base camp trying to tell you what you're not doing right. Eh. Nobody asks them. Nobody asks them. And I'm climbing it with you, bestie. And so I started looking into this mountain, okay, <laughs> this concept. And I started seeing celebrity videos from when they first started and their cringe mountain moments. Ben Affleck, okay, he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He had just moved to L.A. It was his first movie. He couldn't even deliver his one line. They had to, like, put somebody else's voice over him speaking. Because his one line, while he was in the middle of a basketball game, his scene, he could not even deliver. <laughs> okay? Lana Del Rey, she had music that she was putting out and putting out and putting out and putting out, and it wasn't going anywhere. She probably hates those other albums, but then she remixed and remastered them. And I think she kind of like slowed them down even. She went through Cringe Mountain. Post Malone. If you saw Post Malone's first video, go look it up on TikTok. Go look it up on TikTok. You're, you will, you'll be on the floor. On the floor. Okay. You'll be like, that's his first video. What? What? We all have to go there. We all have to climb it. And it's the people over here that are here for the drama. They're here for the whatever. They are not our cheerleaders. I am your spiritual cheerleader. Other influencers are your spiritual cheerleaders, your motivators, here for the pep rally. The people at the base camp, they're not here for the pep rally. They're here to stop you from climbing it because they're like, oh my gosh, I wish I was doing that. Low key, I wish I was doing that. And there's something about you where you are going to be switching lanes like never before. I have some new concepts that I'm going to be talking to you guys about on Patreon and here. But basically, you're switching lanes because you are really starting to see where you're going and how valuable you are. You are realizing, bestie, how truly valuable you are and that cringe is just a part of it. It's just a part of it. And there's many layers to the cringe. That's why it's a freaking mountain. Capiche? It's a mountain because it's there's there's levels to it. Every year I've got stuff where I'm like, oh, I cannot believe I put that out. Oh, I cannot. But like, but that's how you learn. I tell you guys all the time. I haven't said this in a while. When you are starting a channel, when you are starting a platform, start pumping out videos. They will tell bigger creators will tell you this that help you with content creation. They will tell you, pump out 20 videos, pump out 40 videos, really start getting the cringe factor going so you can see what you do like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at, so you can strengthen those skills. What you are realizing right now, bestie, is that you are not behind in the race. You were just getting started and you are looking at the mountain differently because there are other people in cool land that have gone viral, that have gotten it, they got up Cringe Mountain somehow easier and faster than you. And the reason being is you connect differently with people, with the community that you're building, with the clients that you talk to, with the customers that you reach out to, whatever your line of business is, whatever your purpose is, people connect to your depth. You don't have short-sighted connections. So some of the people in Cool Land, they, that's not their strong suit. You guys having depth is your strong suit. So that's why if you look at the people around you, even if it's small, say you guys have a smaller audience or a smaller group of clientele, whatever the case is, it is because you connect on a deeper level to your, your community. And there are other people that are like, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get this bag. I'm just trying to secure this. And it's easy for them. Going viral could be easy for them, but being connected to their audience is harder for them. Having that one-on-one -on -one time, 
you guys see this all the time. You'll see other people, their numbers will be really, really high, but they don't connect with their audience at all. Just giving you guys examples. They don't connect with them in the comments. They don't connect with them in live streams. And I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just saying that everybody is different. So you guys have creators that like they don't talk to you. They don't reach out to you. They don't reply. And then you guys have your other creators that read for a smaller audience or connect with it or make content for a smaller audience. And you see the community is in fuego on fire. And so you guys are one of the two. You guys could be shyer and making content shoot for the stars is easy. And it might bother some of you that you can't connect like other people do. So that could be something that you're working on. And then for everybody else that has the smaller group going that's more intimate, you're realizing what you bring to the table. I want you guys to affirm it below. I know what I bring to the table. I am switching lanes like never before. Cringe Mountain, here I come. Cringe Mountain, here I come. And I love this for you guys. Um, we have your song, Radio, by Lana Del, Lana Del Rey. And I thought that was crazy that that was my first song that was given to me as a download or part of your download because she definitely had to climb Cringe Mountain for years. For years. Probably writing music, shredding it, writing music, shredding it, putting it out, hoping for the best. What the heck? Sometimes it takes people five to ten years to get up Cringe Mountain. And it's okay. Because why you guys bring depth to the table, depth to the equation, is because you are creating a legacy. The rotten lemons that you were given in life, the rotten lemons that you were given at birth, you are taking that dog shit and you are creating a legacy. Longevity. And everybody that was like shooting to the top, like tr freaking running past you like it was Hunger Games to get to the, the tippy tippy top and into cool land of Cringe Mountain. Sometimes it, they're one hit wonders or they won't be around in five years. Think about that. Think about how many creators have been cringe. They're like, oh my gosh, nobody liked them for years and years and years. Years. And then now... You see them with their hand in everything successful because they did not give up. You will never give up. The people that connect with my channel, you refuse. There's nobody that gets it out of the mud like my collective. The people that are actually supposed to be here. There's no one that pivots like you. No one that switches lanes like you. And no one that gets it up out of the mud like you. You're like, ooh, rotten lemons. Okay. Okay. I know exactly what I'm going to do with that. You guys handle opposition, trolls, deception, thievery, corruption, like a boss. You are the original gangster of everything that you do. And everyone at the base camp talking their shit, ain't nobody listening. Nobody's listening. Nobody is listening. There's going to be people always, devil energy, the enemies, the ops that are going to try to tell you, Mm, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't climb there if I were you. I mean, nobody's going there. Nobody asked them. Nobody freaking asked them. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, fitness guru. What I like about you, bestie, is you reply and you're real. Thank you. I am here for a connection. No, is my audience like leaps and bounds where maybe other people's are? No, but I want longevity and this is what I'm good at. I want to help the collective. I want to be your, your favorite motivational speaker, your favorite cheerleader, your chicken noodle soup for the soul. The place that you go when you're like, I hate my job. I'm going to karate chop my boss's face. I want you to think, I'm going to go see what Brittany's doing. You know, I'm going to go see, I want to go feel better. And that's what I hope that you come here for. And that's why it's always obvious when people are here for the bullshit. You guys are not here for the drama. I am not here for the drama. People want to muck around, but they want to skip Cringe Mountain. So they come on other people's platforms trolling and spamming and acting whole demons the house. 
They come up on here and it's like, you got to get your own little situation going. Get your own cringe mountain going. Don't come up on my shit doing all of this because we're not here for that. Okay. That's why I'm always telling you guys affirmations, ask formations. We are constantly repro pre-programming our subconscious because we want positivity echoed back to us. You guys are realizing your value like never before. You guys knew in the back of your mind, like, yeah, I'm valuable and uh, I know. But no, today, more than ever, you really know that you're here for the long run. You're really not going anywhere. And you're really going to start carrying yourself different, shoulders back, head up. Your posture is going to be different. You're going to be more aware. Okay, whoever I'm speaking to, you're going to be more aware of what you bring to the table, and how you're going to present that. Okay, so now that you know everyone's got to go through Cringe Mountain, okay, everyone's got to climb that. Everyone has to start somewhere. You're like, okay, I understand that part. I'm not going to give up. I understand what I bring to the table, and I'm really going to dig in and start treating myself as such. You guys are going to start, how do I say this? As you're realizing that you're valuable, you're going to start speaking that not only into yourself, but to others. And you're going to start practicing that. It might be cringy at first. Okay. It's like me saying, I'm your bestie on the internet. Da, 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 da. It's like, say you're practicing the first couple takes of what you want to be, what you aspire to be and being like, oh my gosh, why did I say it like that? Uh, and then like picking yourself apart. And then just realizing, no, I am your bestie on the internet. I am your spiritual advisor. I am your motivational speaker, your fairy godmother, your favorite reindeer. I am all the things. You are going to start practicing your confidence and roaring without saying a word. Your eyes alone can cast a spell. And then, so I posted some memes, which is what I do to cheer you guys up and to let you know that you are never alone. And there's people in there committed to misunderstanding the memes, the memes. And you guys, this is shadow, post, retro, do, do, do. And people are like, oh my gosh, what type of magic are you talking about? Because magic is bad. Not everybody was doing that. There's like, there's always like one to three people in the bunch that feel important. And so they really try to roar and be important either during a live stream or in the community tab is where they try to pop off and be seen. And so then you can look at the history of their comments and then it looks like undermining, gaslighting, bullshit. And then here they are. Show me who you are. You guys are going to show people who you really are. You are not over explaining. You are not over expounding for nobody. People are going to be like, I want you to prove to me who you are. Nobody asked them anything. There's always going to be hecklers at the base of the mountain. Always. So I'm posting the memes. I'm trying to make you guys laugh. I'm trying to make you guys giggle. People are like going off like, really? That's what you took from this message? That was just the introduction to Cringe Mountain. Okay, so there's a lot of people that are a little bit upset by what you bring to the table. And you're wishing them well. And may they find their blessings elsewhere because you kind of understand that feeling when you haven't started yet. We all know that feeling of like, dang, I, I wish I could do that. It doesn't have to be roaring and saying jealousy, but just saying, I wish I had, you know, the courage to do that. And you guys are in these phases of your life where you do, in fact, have the courage to do that. Do not let anyone come in with their big foot and smash your legacy and the things that you're building. You've already been handed rotten things from the beginning of time. You're not letting anyone new come into the equation and give you some dog shit. You are just not. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? Oh, your guys' other song is Lil Kim, The Jump Off. Okay. You guys are jumping off and ready to switch lanes to say, 
I am here and I am speaking life into myself and into others. You are basically campaigning for yourself. Like, no, I'm awesome. I'm telling you that I'm awesome. Believe me the first time. That's how you're looking at people. That's how you're speaking to people. Because you are seeing how rare your gifts are and how you need to carry yourself. And so you're going to be looking at different ways that you are speaking about yourself last week, a couple days ago. You're going to be looking at ways that you were dealing with your business a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago, and you're going to be speaking differently. Okay, you're going to be really bringing your value, your milkshake, and everything else that you got. So it's like a big level up for the milkshake that you already have, for the aura that you already have that has people short of breath. You feel me? So you guys are realizing everyone has to start somewhere and you're going to switch lanes like never before. You're about to pivot. But the lane that you're switching into, you're going to stay there because you are really starting to believe that you can maneuver with better strategy. You're always getting better. So what I have for you guys is right now you guys could feel like you were in the two of pentacles and feeling like there's ups, high ups and very low downs and that you're juggling life and feeling like that you're not even doing it correctly. And right now you're getting some clarity on the fact that you could be overgiving. So you guys might be really trying to reel that in and seeing that you guys could employ a lot of people. You guys could bring a lot of people together. You guys bring opportunities to people. I don't know if you know this. You guys are going from juggling and feeling like I can't get it together to realizing that you bring people together. Whether you speak life into all of your friends. You guys give people the courage and you help them feel brave. Okay, you guys are a positive force to be around. Whether you guys are speaking life into your friends at the gym, speaking life into your friends at work, like, no, girl, don't quit. Don't do that. Don't pop off on them. Nope, don't give them that. You guys are always bringing people together, helping them see their own opportunities. Helping them see where they have been handed rotten lemons and what they can make that into. You guys are seeing, dang, I do, people really do look up to me. People look up to you. You are a very charitable person. And that's why you guys bring the depth to the equation. And that's what's bringing you longevity no matter how long you are at the middle, beginning, or the end of Cringe Mountain. No matter how many months you've been there, how many years you've been there, everyone has that part of their story. Everyone successful has that part of their story. So I thank Anita for introducing me to that concept. And it was very fun to research and then figure out how I'm going to <laughs> draw that for you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Then we have the three of pentacles. We have the two of pentacles, the six of pentacles, the three of pentacles. You guys bring people together. In good ways and in bad ways. Even though you guys aren't here for the drama, you guys show people like, you need to be a team. You guys make people feel kind of ridiculous if they're not on the A team. You guys make people feel kind of ridiculous if they're being corrupt or inauthentic. And then you show others that are, you know, more high vibrational, that are more your wavelength, Dang, I really want to be a student. I, re I really need a mentor. I really need to learn this better. You guys define teamwork, even if you don't like working in teams. You guys defy the odds and you guys always show people, I know how to be a team player. It doesn't mean everybody wants to work with me. People at the bottom of the base camp. But you still show people like, this is what it could be. We could be the dream team. We could be the A team. You could shoot your shot, but you're a little salty over there. Or you could shoot your shot, but you're in your head right now. So you guys just really make people have epiphanies, big realizations, big aha moments. That is something else that you guys bring to the table. Romance is going to be very important to you this week, but 
there is a union or a partnership. Now, not everyone's love life is going great right now, so I want you guys to drop your diamonds down below if you guys need a love portion of this message for singles or for um, relationships. But I'm getting that you guys are making really important decisions with anything that you're connected to. Jobs that you're connected to, people that you're connected to, you're really looking at these things like, do I want to be connected to this business? Do I want to be connected to this person? You're really going to be evaluating that right now before this retrograde starts. We got a lot of diamonds in the building. So then we have the Queen of Swords and we have Justice. Okay, so as you are re-evaluating your partnerships, you are looking for people. Dang, you guys, there's a lot of diamonds. I have nothing pre-pulled for love, but I have a deck. I pulled out one deck for singles and one deck for relationships. Thank you, Candace. <laughs> Jennifer says, nope, taking a break from that. A lot of you guys are taking a break from love, but you still might want to know what's going on for the people that you're talking to or that you're dumping, whatever, what have you. And then for those of you that are in relationships, whether it's going good or on the rocks. So you guys are looking for people that are honest. You're like, I want to be part of an honest business. I want to be part of an honest partnership. I want honesty. You're looking for people that are funny, witty, charming, and intelligent. People that are protective over you. So whether you guys are single or in a relationship, you want somebody that is not only going to be funny and have you laughing and peeing your pants, but somebody that is protective over you. Somebody that's going to ride for you until the wheels freaking fall off. And this is something you're like, oh my gosh, love this person, love them to death, but they can't stand up for me to save their life. They can't stand up for me to save their life. And that's a freaking problem. That is a problem for you guys, unfortunately. You're like, there could be somebody hitting on your person, for instance. And what are they doing? Are they standing up for you? No. Are they blocking this person? No. Are they telling this person to go fly a kite off a cliff? No. And that's not for everybody, but you'll know if that part is for you. So what you guys are looking at right now is somebody that is going to, in fact, protect you, that is going to shield you, that is going to show you loyalty. The same thing with a business. Anybody that you guys are in business with, if they are not protective over you, whether this is a collaboration, a partnership, um, somebody that you've contracted out, if they are not protective over your namesake or your business, when people are speaking ill, these are these red flags, you are looking them square in the face. You're like, you know what? I don't like that about them. I really don't. I don't like that when everyone's talking their shit and starting this drama, that they don't say, don't talk about them like that. They're legitimate. Don't talk about them like that. They really know how to get it up out of the mud. They're a good friend to me. They're good in business. Mind yours. You're not needing anybody to go for somebody's jugular, but you are paying attention to that right now. Are they intelligent? Are they honest? Are they legitimate? Do they run things legitimately? Where is their integrity meter at? Some of the people that you guys are dealing with, they need to be humbled. Or you've been humbled them all of 2023. And now they're looking through the window like, I miss my friend. You should have appreciated the collective when they were around. Now you're the little doggy in the window like, oh my gosh, I miss my friend. You should have done better. You should have done better. And some of these people that miss you are still doing their dirt, still creating drama. And you're like, don't miss me. Don't miss me. Don't at me. Don't miss me. Don't tag me. Don't text me. Don't do it. And so you guys are looking for security right now. You guys have this all on your own. But wouldn't it be nice if somebody else could bring some security to the table? Wouldn't it be nice if somebody could just, you know, let you take a nap and help you ward off some unwanted energies? Wouldn't it be nice so you could take a break instead of having people around you that don't have a backbone that say, oh, yeah, I said that. And you know damn well they didn't. 
You know damn well that they didn't take up for you. They didn't stick up for you like they said that they did. You guys are bringing balance into your life right now. And you're showing people I'm prepared to do this by myself. If I have to, I'm prepared to be a single parent. If I have to, I can be my own hero and I can be the whole villain too in this narrative. You are getting ready to safeguard everything that you are building. So you guys are getting on the, on the phone. You are making new connections. You are reaching out for what you want. You're like, well, I'm in the middle of Cringe Mountain. Going to be here for a minute or five. So what I'm going to do is make some phone calls and shoot my shot because I know what I deserve. You guys are bringing new enthusiasm to the equation. The lane that you're switching into is enthusiastic. Okay, the lane that you're switching into is going to send a fever. It's going to send shivers down people's spine. And that's the type of excitement that you are excited for and that you thrive on. You are coming through fierce, fantastical, enthusiastic, ready to ignite everything you touch. And I'm here for every second of it. So bestie, <laughs> affirm it below. I am ready to ignite everything I touch. You guys are a creative force, an unconquerable force. You guys are the diamond in the rough. You guys were created underneath all of this pressure. If you guys have been wondering, is somebody going to call me? Is somebody going to reach out to me? Is this one thing I've been thinking about going to go in my favor? And you know you've been working your ass off. Your answer is very likely. Okay? We have very likely. You guys have been working tirelessly, devoted to something important to you. Is this a job, a marriage, a relationship, a business that you started? Whatever this is that you've been working diligently on, your answer is very likely that things are going to pan out for you. Like in the best way possible. Always pray before watching any of my messages. I don't like to give anyone false hope. So please use your discernment. There are plenty of other messages. If this is not your jam, don't ever try to make it fit. If it's apparent to you that it's not yours. You guys switching lanes is going to bring you new ideas. You guys showing people, you know what? This is how... I would like to talk about myself. You're not actually saying this to people, but you're going to start practicing. It might be a little cringy at first. It's okay. But you're really going to start seeing yourself differently. And I'm so excited for that. This is groundbreaking developments for you, breakthroughs for you, and you are going to be setting trends like never before. Affirm it below. I am setting trends like never before in the best way possible. You are showing other people, speak life into yourself. Don't accept anything less. And people really find you encouraging. So you guys have been realizing that you need to be self-aware with certain things, how you speak negatively or how you're overly critical or how you guys burn yourselves out. And you're like, I'm here for the long haul. I am not avoiding my responsibilities. I'm not avoiding anything that like upsets you normally you're really going to be working on your conspiracy theories what you normally steer clear of people that are fake around you the betrayal okay there's always betrayal at the base of cringe mountain and sometimes a little bit along the way unfortunately as you guys are trying to make new alliances find new support systems there could be some people that are in the climb with you and they feel some type of way. But more than likely, people that have climbed Cringe Mountain that are on the other side, they don't make fun of people that are in the middle of that climb because they know what it took to get there. Okay, so you guys are going to be slung into a new way of thinking, like a slingshot. You guys are ready to aim, fire, and launch the things that you desire. So instead of like sitting on it and being like, oh, I don't know if I should do that. You're like, no, I'm going to do that. There's somebody here that is quitting a job very soon. Now that could be for a lot of you, but I feel like it's not for everyone. But somebody here is like, I want to invest in this. So I've got to leave this behind. The scales are being balanced. And I'm seeing for whoever that is, for the job part specifically, Things are going to move more, 
more cohesive. Things are going to move for you in a better way, in a better arrangement, a better order, a better assembly, like a well-oiled machine as you walk away from a really toxic job. A lot of us have had toxic jobs where we're like, we can't leave, we have to stay there, and we're just trying to make the best of it. And if that is you guys where you're like, I can't leave this job, I have to stay here, you're ready to launch a new way of your enemies at work and your boss seeing yourself. You are you might be going over their head and saying to their boss's boss, this is what I want. Is that in the equation or not? I want to take over this. Is that in the equation? Like you are going to propel and launch and throw yourself into the middle. You are going to shoot your shot like never before. Like this is what I want. And then it's going to give you a more clear picture if you can grow with this company or not. If you can grow with this nine to five, this corporate job, wherever you are or not. You're like, I want a clear answer. I'm looking for honesty. I'm looking for protection. I'm looking for longevity. You are either with me or not. That could be a relationship or a job, but either no matter what, the scales are being balanced and you will have the clarity and you will have the truth. Something you're going to be focusing on over the next couple weeks, bestie, is you are not going to cry over spilled milk. I said this to you guys in the last two live streams. You are really going to be like, if it's not for me, it's not for me. I can't cry about it. I got other places to be. So I'm proud of you guys for that. You're seeing that there are certain things that cannot be changed was the live stream where I was talking about somebody getting written up. Was that you? Are you at odds with people at your work and you're like angry at them? You're like, that can't be changed. The best way you can show revenge, the best way you can get your get back, and you guys know what I mean when I say that, is showing them that you're happy. Showing them that you have gratitude, that your life is going good. So sorry that their life's going like shit and they be projecting it onto you. But the best thing that you could serve them is a smile. You don't bother me. You know exactly how to starve a narcissist out. You guys know exactly how to starve a terrible boss out. So do what you do. Pop your shit, bestie. And show them like, my life is happy over here. And I could be your boss one day, so you should move. And you're not going to say any of this to them, but they're going to feel it. They are definitely going to feel it. Your aura has people short of breath. If you guys missed, missed the last live stream, definitely check that out. You guys are going to be dealing with some people that are overbearing. They are self-conscious. You can tell, so you don't really need to do much to rile them up. People that are really catty with you because your confidence is going to be on another level. You're going to be carrying yourself differently. So be really proud of yourself for that. If you really want to show them the middle finger, thrive, live happy. Don't worry about them. And sometimes it's really hard to do when things are so unjust. Unjust, unjust, you know what I mean. In the workplace, we all have been in situations where like, it's so not fair that they did that. Your boss could have complimented you and told you that you were the most reliable employee and the next day wrote you up. You're like, what planet do you live on? I'll wait. And so you're seeing that they're beyond unreasonable. So the best thing that you can do is live your best life, keep climbing that mountain, and they're going to be so sad. They're going to be so upset. They're going to feel uncomfortable. They are. These people feel incomplete. They feel mad. They see you as a savage. They see you as cutthroat. These people want to delay. These people want to delay your success. They want you to feel incomplete and they want you to feel like you are making failed attempts. Your attempts are not failed. Know that. You guys have people that have been acting reckless um, violent, showing off, abusive. They have, uh, they come from a broken home. They are projecting that onto you. They could be going through a divorce, loss of family, lack of stability. I'm just getting that you guys are dealing with people that are straight reckless because of the jealousy that you guys deal with. That's how much you guys bring to the table. You guys are usually minding your own business and they really, some of these people really know how to press your buttons. Okay. Some of you guys got a write-up or got reprimanded at work and you did not sign it and you did not look at it. Some of you guys are tired. You are worn out 
from dealing with these type of environments and you're ready to be your own boss. You are ready to launch something for yourself. You're like, cringe mountain, here I come. Here I come because I'm not going to look back and be mad at myself that I didn't try harder, I didn't move faster, and that I just kept eating this person's shit. You're over it. There's a lot of gossip about you guys. There's a lot of gossip about you guys because you are climbing something for yourself. That you are not struggling like they wanted you to be. There are people talking about the reputation that you have the work ethic that you have. People are constantly thinking about you. You guys don't you guys don't even realize how many people think about you. I'm not trying to like toot your horn, but I'm dead ass serious. Like these people can't believe. They cannot believe the things that you do. The way that you speak, how witty and intelligent you are, how honest you are, how blunt you are. You have these people short of breath. This is what people see in you. They see infinite abundance. They see legacy. They see success. And if they can have a hand in it, they're like, I got to stop that. I got to figure out how to stop that. People are studying you. Some people for good, some people for bad. But these people on the low, they really want to get to know you. But some of them aren't coming at a level one. Some of them are not coming with the respect and... On the low, these people are some of your biggest fans. These people have crushes on you. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm falling in love with them. I can't let them know. They fight the urge to be your friend or they fight the urge to ask you out. It's like the person throwing sand in the sandbox. You guys are in your own sandbox. Look how happy you are. Look how happy you are. You guys are in your own sandbox and you're having a realization it's time for me to switch lanes. I'm going to launch the things that I want and it's going to bring you guys trends, inspired ideas, knowing that it's okay to fail. You guys are going to be buying new gadgets, buying new technology. I know before I'm a retrograde, you guys are going to be buying new devices. And I feel like you guys got a good 11, 10 days to do that before shit hits the fan. And you guys are just going to do the damn thing. Whatever you guys had been planning and working diligently on for six months to a year, you're going to go buy it. You're going to go do it. F the transit. It might be a shit show. Who knows? But you are ready for the battlefield. And you are only taking people with you that are also protective, that are also of the same jam, same wavelength. People that are bringing you a proper offering. You are not taking anything short of that. And then lighting the way. This is what you're realizing about yourself. People already see you as this. They already see you as a trendsetter. They already see you as somebody famous. They already see you as a celebrity. They already see you as somebody that will live a luxurious lifestyle if you do not already. You guys carry this certain liberation in your soul that says, I will walk out. Anytime I see fit, I don't answer to you. I don't answer to you. I'm keeping it a buck. I'm trying to be polite. So move. Thank you. All right, besties. My singles ready to mingle. Let's get your guys's love message. Okay. So order in the cosmic court. What is going on for my singles? And then I'm going to use a different deck for those of you guys in a relationship. Oh my gosh, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. You guys, all my exes live in Texas like I'm George Strait. Nobody wants to see them. Nobody wants a phone call from them. Nobody. Now that you guys are learning how to defy the odds, you look free, uplifted, happy. They're like, oh, it's this would be a good time to call them. No, it would not. The return. The past returns. These people that want to reach out to you, they feel like you are home to them. And whoever these people are, you guys are never on the same page. You could have had a lot of disagreements, a lot of arguments. They're like, why don't you want to date me? I cannot. Yes, Kimmy, the likes. <laughs> I cannot. 
I'm seeing that you guys are going to put this person in their place. You guys are going to put this person in, in their place. They're literally going to call you or text you. They're going to get mad that you're on a dating app or that you're with somebody new. And they're literally going to reach out and you'd be like, what is wrong with you? Where I'm just not interested in you. I'm just not. Somebody's going to be reaching out to you guys this next week. Like, why, why can't we work? Why can't you like me? I don't understand. Like, we're good together. And you're like, but we're not. But we're not. Yeah. You're going to clean up that mess real quick. My singles, you are going to clean up that mess real quick. Like, double time. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Because, like, you're going to be talking to new people and, like, Good things are going to start unfolding. You're like, oh, no, no, no. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out. Prince Charming is coming to the door. Bobby, you can't stand here. You have to go home. <laughs> I can't. X is trying to. You're like, this is in your head. You're like, this is a distraction. They are not going to give me this heavy burden. No, they are not. Like, you are getting rid of them. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like, okay. I said it's not going to work. It's okay. Don't get mad. But have a nice life. Okay. You guys are going to be making really healthy choices for yourself. You're not just going to be with somebody because you're bored. Okay. You are not going to be with somebody just because you're bored and looking for something to do. You guys are not going to be somebody's booty call, somebody's Netflix and chill. You are just not. You guys have the Midas Touch singles. Comment below, I have the Midas Touch you are attracting helpful people because you are getting these other people out of the way. The people that are trying to return, they're like, you're like, uh-uh, mm -mm. not home, nobody's home. You guys are getting divine assistance in attracting helpful people because you guys could have been feeling like your love life is cursed, beauty and the beast. You guys always date people with major differences, feeling like your love life is cursed or feeling like you always have to be the one desperately looking. You're getting ready to scale it back. You're like, I'm not desperately looking. No, I am not. And I am not accepting any of the exes, any of the booty calls, any of the sneaky links. Wow. Yeah, you guys have the Midas touch. So you guys are going to be exploring the waters. You guys are going to be looking at your options, but people are going to be knocking on your door. People are going to be knocking on your door and calling you up and ringing you up. So you guys are going to be really popular because you're being given a gift from your ancestors and because you are scaling back on looking. I tell you guys all the time, when you really stop looking, like, no, I'll be fine. I have so much freedom by myself. I'm so good over here. Once you guys really sit in that, you're like, I don't care anymore. That is when it's about to come out of the mud, out of the woodworks. Your ancestors are bringing you a gift. Or three. You guys have new connections. Uh, wow. And then it's all going to make sense. Your past, your present, your future, everything is going to make sense to you. You are also going to be meeting somebody that you feel like you have a past with. That could be your divine counterpart. Bestie. Somebody's going to really surprise you. Um, this could be somebody that lives in your neighborhood. Somebody that you went to school with. Somebody that you've been had on your social media. And they're going to be like, hey, um, do you want to go out? And you're going to be like, uh, I guess. And they're, you're going to go out with them. And they're going to surprise you. Boom. Boom. I'm so excited for you guys. Like, people are studying you. And unfortunately, the people that you're telling no to, they've got some negative resentments. That's okay. They're a little bit hot-tempered. You're just going to handle them gently. You're going to be like, you know what? I, don't, I think you're a great person. You're just not my person. They feel wronged by you. I'm just going to give you a heads up. Remember we're, what transit we're moving into and what transit we're already in. And also remember these readings are timeless. Timeless. There are people that feel frustrated and annoyed. They're going to be showing you this and you're going to show them some grace because we have all been there. 
We have all been like, why aren't you with me? I'm perfect for you. I don't get it. And now somebody's doing this to you and you're like, I could pop off, but I'm not going to. Let me break it down gently, okay? And you guys are about to get a lot of recognition. You guys are about to get a lot of attention. This new single life that you are leading. Wow. And then another message for my singles. You guys could be meeting somebody that you will meet while traveling, okay? Some of you guys will meet this person while traveling. And then others of you, they could live close by and you guys could have a history with them. Or this relationship could start out long distance and then grow into something very local. Okay? So that's the message for the singles. I love that for you guys. Okay, let me see. Let me get one. Wow. You guys are definitely attracting a relationship. But what I'm getting for the singles, okay, this is the last message for you guys. I know I'm like, one more, one more, one more. You guys are definitely seeing which factors are important to you. Is it religious factors? Is it spiritual views? Like, you're looking at that. And now, instead of you conforming to somebody else's belief system, you're like, we're either going to gel or we're not. We're either going to jam or we're not. We're either going to be cohesive or we're not. So you're really looking at that. You're not conforming to somebody else's belief system. You are attracting a relationship. See how this person's like alone and they're like, I don't need nobody. I'm by myself. Whatever. I'll cry over here. Nobody will know. <laughs> you're attracting a relationship. You are attracting a relationship. One where you're going to have an instant connection. You're going to be like kind of like hesitant. But then when you get to know them, you're going to be like, oh, wow. This has a very favorable outcome. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for you guys. Okay. Relationships. Relationships. Thank you, guys. Organic Slay. This is happening to me currently. Whoa. Okay, anything not of the light or the divine plan is no longer welcome here. I must leave immediately. Okay, those of you guys in relationships, there's something that you're planning for your person. Your person could be down in the dumps or they could be stressing out a lot. And they're going through a lot of change. I'm seeing that you guys really want to be there for them in this change. So there's something that you guys are planning, like you're planning a vacation or some type of surprise. And maybe you've been wanting to like spill the beans and tell them like, oh, I have this surprise for you. But because of what they're going through, you might be seeing like this is not the right time to tell them about said surprise because they're not ready for this news. They're really like in their feels. Okay. So let me see. They do seem down. Thank you, Nikki. So this person is like a phoenix like you, but they're wounded right now. And they're not feeling as happy as they could. They could be dealing with a lot of stress or weight gain. Uh, they're feeling like insecure. They really need to connect with you. And so there's something that you're trying to surprise them with. You're... If you guys live together or you're married, you guys could be trying to surprise them with some money or, uh, I don't know. I'm getting that this person stresses out a lot about money, a lot about finances. Yeah. You are going to try to teach this person something. Those of you guys in relationships, I have something on my face. Ugh. Okay. Hold on. How do I know that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There was literally a bug on my face. <laughs> there was a bug on my face. 
Okay. Um. Anyways. <coughs> like a little gnat stuck in my lip gloss. Like, ew, ew, ew. Is it probably on my Red Bull? Freaking springtime. Anyways, you guys, this person is a phoenix and they're going through it. They do not see money the same way as you. Like, they could hoard money and you and you like understand the flow of money. Just an example. And so you're going to try to teach this person something like, hey, it's not going to be that bad. Like, let me show you this. Let me teach you this. And you might even be trying to like work your butt off to like get them some type of surprise or cushion. You're really trying to like ease a burden off of them. Okay. For those of you that like understand what's going on with them, there is something that you're trying to ease for them. You're trying to ease the pain. I'm getting that this person really misses someone. Okay. Maybe they lost a parent or a pet. Okay. And they are, this person that you're with is really smart, but they don't journal probably or like write a lot. But this person is very creative. You guys are either going to introduce this person to a creative outlet. Okay. You're going to show them like, hey, you know, you could write this. You can make content. You could start a podcast. You're going to try to get them feeling better. And it's so cute how much you guys love this person to even try all of these things. Like showing them, hey, have you ever tried this? Have you ever tried that? Like you're willing to do anything because this person could have done a lot for you and things are really moving slow for them. Like they're in a slow season. They're in a stagnant winter blizzard and you're like, oh my gosh, I just want to cheer this person up. So there's some type of burden you're trying to release for them. This could have to do with money. Like you guys could be trying to pay for things, trying to gift them something. I'm just getting that so strongly. So besties that are in relationships, you guys are trying to figure out the science of your person. Because if they really did lose a parent or a pet, there's just some type of grief that is hitting them that they don't know how to handle. And this could have happened two years ago, but there's like all of these feelings resurfacing because maybe they didn't ever have time to properly grieve these deaths. And... They, I just get like they, they don't see things the way that you do. Like if you're excited, not excited when somebody passes away, but just realizing that you can connect with them even after they pass away and talk to them, etc. This person might find that harder to do. So you are trying to do different things. You are trying to be open minded. You are trying to get this person to be open minded because there's a lot of stuff that they need to sort out. There's shadow work that they need to do. There's, you know, grief that they need to grieve. So you're really going to be pressing for this person to take time off, take a vacation, and trying to show them, like, these were lemons handed to you, but it doesn't have to be this sour situation. It can be amazing. Okay, let me see what else I get for you guys. I feel like you're just going to show them, like, life is not that bad, okay? We are getting there slowly, but we're doing it together. Um, I feel like this person would do really well on social media. Maybe you can, like, lift their spirits by, like, helping them with the social media account. There's something that you guys can do to together that will help this person's confidence. And helping them feel like what they do is lucrative. Helping them see what they bring to the table. And maybe you guys are really good at doing this for other people, but it's hard for you guys to do that to your for your person. And showing them, like, you're persistent, you're a boss, you're an original gangster, like, you got this. They couldn't stop you, so you're coming back stronger. They couldn't stop you, so you're coming back stronger. Maybe somebody's been trying to, like, intervene in your guys' relationship. Okay, somebody's been trying to intervene in your relationship and they're not going to stop you guys. Like, because justice is coming. <gasps> Bestie! Justice. Angelic help. You are an angel in this person's life. Whether this is your soulmate or not, you really are an angel in their life. I'm going to cry. 
you guys are going to get justice because you have good intentions for this person. Even if they're not the one. You're really trying to like get them out of this sadness. And your angels are going to bless you with new opportunities because you have been honest in how you deal with not only this person, but with money as well. Okay, let me give you guys an example. The other day, I went to the store. I was in a hurry. They were about to close. I had cases of water on my cart, but I didn't realize that there were blueberries and bananas underneath the cases of water in the child seat. And so I get out and I'm loading the car and I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's still fruit in here that's not paid for. It's not in a bag. I try to like run the stuff back in, but they've already locked the doors. And I'm like, okay, old me, where's the bell? Old me would have been like, ha ha, that's mine. New me is like, oh, hell no. I need to ask for forgiveness right now. I need to pay for this right now. But like old me and my addiction would have been like, <laughs> peace. And because you guys are really looking at all of your dealings, little things, big things, white lies, like you're not even telling white lies right now. You are really trying to change your tune in all areas of life. So I go to the store. I didn't go to the store the next day because I was like busy working, but then I went the next day and this guilt was just like weighing on me. And I'm like, I just need to go to the store ASAP. So I go and I'm like, hey, I got these blueberries and these bananas and I didn't pay for them. It's like $10, but can I just like scan this stuff twice because I need to pay for it from Sunday. And they were like, oh, they were looking at me like I was crazy because people try to steal from this store all the time. They were like, I mean, I guess, like, do you really, I was like, I need to, I need to pay for this. Please let me pay for this twice because I need to call my husband and let him know that I took care of this because we were both like pr saying our prayers before we ate dinner on Sunday. And we were like, please forgive us about the bananas and the blueberries. Like we didn't even see that and rushed out of the store, paid for everything else. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not a saint by any means. But I am on a better path, okay? I'm not a saint by any means, but I am on a better path. Because old me would have been like, old me would have meant to do it. Bestie, old me would have meant to do that. And I pride myself on being a completely different person now that isn't like looked at at the store that I go to. The store that I go to now, everybody knows me. They're like, that girl doesn't steal. And I, but before, like in my early 20s, like that's how I used to ride. Okay. A lot of us know about Walmart and I've been arrested many times. Okay. And one of the times I was arrested, I was stealing dog food. Riddle me what? Got into a fight with my ex and he was like, I'm not giving you money for the dog. Da -da -da -da. And I was like, I need dog food, bruh. I need dog food. I need money for the dog food. And so I took my little dog, put it in the car, put her in the car, and went and was like, I'm going to get this dog food one way or another. And then what do I do? I'm not only grabbing dog food. I'm like, oh, this dress looks cute. Oh, I need some ice cream. And I'm just like, all the courage in the world, like walking out the store. Well, even though I had done that a million times and I paid all my debts to society in my sobriety, and ask for forgiveness and work through all of that. This is like years and years ago. But old me just didn't care. And I'd done it so many times. So many times. that I was like, I'm never going to get caught. <laughs> there was a secret shopper next to me. Like Brittany. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter that they were there and I didn't see them. Because it was time. It was time for the scales to get balanced with all the, the dirt I had been doing, okay? I don't like admitting this, but when I was a teenager, my mom, when I was working all of these jobs, she would take all of my money. And so how and why do I still have to go jack and steal what I need when I have a job? And so when he told me he's not giving me money for the dog food, I was like, <laughs> I don't care. 
And so I got out of being arrested, but I was detained. Okay, I was detained, paid off the fines, but I was like in handcuffs like my little dog's in the car. I swear I should have just grabbed the dog food, but I got a little greedy and I grabbed all these other things. <sighs> so every now and then we need to be humbled. Okay, and even though I had done it a bunch of times, like that was the time that I was going to get caught. But I started doing that when I was in high school because I never had money, even though I was working. And it just made me really angry. So when somebody tells me like, you can't have that. No, no, no. Um, <coughs> I will get it by any means necessary. Okay, I will get it by any means necessary. But now I'm different. My integrity is different. I, I don't think that way. Now I'm like, feel like God is going to like strike me with lightning if I even accidentally steal. Okay. So I was like, I waited a day too long. I need to go to the store right now, right now, right now. And then call my husband after that. I already went. You guys are just seeing that doing things a different way, really addressing things differently is showing you like, dang, I'm getting all types of angelic help, help that you deserve. Help is on the way. Okay, help is on the way. Like there were so many times that I had been really reckless and irresponsible and just really should have been in trouble a long time ago for certain things. And, you know, it all did catch up to me. Okay, so where when I went to jail the last time, the judge was like, I'm sick of seeing your face. I'm like, so I'm not getting out. <laughs> so I'm not getting out. You guys are going to be tapping into your strength. You're going to be looking at your past, your present, and your future differently. Your past, how you're climbing up Cringe Mountain. Like, you have these gifts that you are meant to share with the world. Julia says, it's okay, I used to steal. Yeah. It's like... You figure the people that own it, you're like, they probably got enough. They probably got enough money. But yeah, I just, we've all been there where we've been rebellious. And now you guys are rebellious, but in a different way. Okay. So you guys are not here for the drama and people are in awe of how you put yourself out there despite the critics. Okay. You guys had a lot of critics that were just like, you're never going to make it. You're never going to be anybody. And then things that you did do well, they tried to like hijack or steal or call it their own. We have the high priestess. Follow your intuition right now. Follow your psychic abilities. You guys are really being shown that your intuition is not like a figment of your imagination. Okay? Okay. Think about before you were spiritual and I have an example. Okay. There was one time where I had a bad feeling. Me and my little sister, we were going to go like ride our bikes. And I was like, I have a bad feeling. I'm like, you should close the garage. And she's like, nah, nah. And I'm like, no, you should close the garage. Her bike got stolen. Okay. Cause she was on rollerblades and I was on my bike and her bike got stolen. Like literally two seconds after I said that. So you guys are starting to see like, dang, my intuition is my superpower. Really pay attention to that right now because so many people are going to be flighty and like through the roof, angry in this Aries situation that if you are driving and you have a feeling, okay, I can't see anybody, but I feel like somebody's there. Look again, trust your intuition. Okay, we have the Ten of Pentacles. There's a legacy that you're going to be building like never before. You guys feel like you guys got different ingredients for your sauce, the sauce that you've been making, all saucy and whatnot. <laughs> okay, you know what it reminds me of? Cardi B, when she was on Love and Hip Hop, she always used to say, and what have you, and the whatnot, and what have you, and the whatnot. <laughs> and I was like, my husband would always be like, why do you watch the show? I'm like, because this girl is hilarious. <laughs> So I watched her before, you know, she was on, I watched her when she was on Love and Hip Hop before she was famous. And I just thought she was f so funny. So whatever the what have you and the what not, people see that you are meant to build this legacy. Do not get it twisted. You are meant and destined to build a legacy. And you guys could be, a, be like the Cardi B's of the situation. 
Some people don't like her, and that's totally fine. But there are, when I watched her, there were these DJs that were like, eh, we don't Fs with you. You're like, we're going to treat you like a dancer because you're a dancer. We're going to treat you like a stripper because you're a stripper. We're going to try to make you the pass around. And she was like, no, you're not. And so then she started getting treated differently because she wouldn't sleep with this DJ. And then he was giving favoritism to other girls. And now some of these shows are scripted. But for the plot, you know what I mean? Like, you guys are the twist in the tale. Bet that DJ wishes now he didn't treat her like that. Bet that DJ wishes now he didn't treat her like that. People are going to be upset. And they're going to be playing it back. Like, why did I say that to them? It's not like they were ever actually going to ride your gravy train. But... They're going to be pretty stinking mad at themselves, okay? So do not get it twisted. You are, in fact, building a legacy, and a lot of people can see this. But there are people at the bottom of Cringe Mountain, like, you can't get there. Not without me. You can't get there. You look dumb as fuck. Nobody asked them. Nobody. Nobody. So for anybody that missed the beginning of the live stream, this is Cringe Mountain, okay? This is the base of the mountain. These are the haters. This is you, bestie. Okay, that's you right there. And this is cool land. This is where you're going. You're going here. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. One day, they're going to be sorry that they were making fun of you. Okay, I'm sure a lot of people thought, she's a stripper. She ain't never going to be a rapper. Stop. And whether you like her or don't, whether you F's with her or not, it's up and it's stuck. You know that uh, meme where she's like, I just want to thank all my haters <laughs> because they've been playing my music. These people are assessing you. They are watching you. They will add to your value somehow, even with you don't effing with them. Even with you not effing with them. Okay, these people, you got the three of pentacles and the seven of swords. These people didn't want to work with you. Okay, some of them tried to make you feel like you're less than, you're lower on the totem pole, like, ew. And they weren't even near Cringe Mountain, okay? They were, like, in the brush. They were, like, lost. Didn't have no GPS, no compass. They didn't know where they were going. You just somehow saw them along the way. They were, like... I wouldn't work with you. You're like, you're not even on the mountain. You're not even in cool land. You're not even over there. I can't. So there's always going to be naysayers. Always. I'm sure Cardi B looks at love and hip hop and was like, I hate my teeth. I, I didn't like how I did my hair. I'm sure there's things that she didn't like. And then you can fix it. Like we all have our cringy moments. Lana Del Rey, Ben Affleck. Everybody had to work those shit jobs or do fast food or make the, you guys, look up Post Malone's first video. Okay, when I did my research on this concept, I was like, that is not Post Malone's first video. <gasps> Bless his heart. Bless his freaking heart. I was like, dang, I mean, this is a whole different vibe. You guys are safe to transition. Six of Swords, you guys are safe. The light is at the end of the tunnel. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You guys have the Midas touch. People might be over here in these streets going viral and getting things a lot faster than you. But you guys have that depth. And you guys bring people together to bond, to build legacies, to build a community. So don't be hard on yourself that like, oh, I made that and it looks really bad. I don't like that art that I made. I don't like that song that I did. I don't, we all have the cringe. That's why I tell you guys, if you're going to start content, pump out some videos, 10, 20, 30, 40 videos, get the cringe factor going and look at it and be like, mm, okay, I don't like that. Okay. This is my strong suit. Get to know yourself. That's what you're doing. You're getting to know what your strong suits are. You're getting to know where your enthusiasm lies, where your talent lies. There's always going to be people trying to cop your shit, steal your titles, steal your lyrics, steal your aesthetic. They're always going to be out there. That they're not, perhaps, 
going to do it like you, okay? Especially if they cop that shit. They're not just going to be out here doing it like you. You guys are going to be digging deep for the answers. Nine of Cups. As you go through this integrity shift, you're going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to do things different. I'm going to operate differently. I'm going to really speak value into, into, my, into myself and when you speak to others. And it's going to show people like, oh, dang, what am I missing out on? I should favor them in some way. You guys are going to kind of glamour people like, duh. I'm what you need, duh. This is how you're going to be presenting yourself. You're going to be showing people like, oh my gosh, what am I missing out on? What am I not investing in? It's you. You are figuring out the science of you. You are figuring out the science of your relationships. Who brings intelligence to the equation? Who brings honesty to the equation? And who is willing to protect you? Like that DJ that was supposed to be producing music for Cardi B in the beginning when she was like trying not to be a stripper anymore. He wasn't taking her seriously. And he wasn't being protective over her. He was laughing at her. Who's laughing now? These people wanted to give you the tower. Oh, you're not favored. You have all the favor in the world. Affirm it below. I have all the favor in the world. Duh. And <clears throat> as they wanted you to feel like you don't have favor, you don't have this, you don't have that. They wanted to laugh. They wanted to give you the tower. And now the tower is there. Theirs. And the last laugh is yours. These people wanted to humble you in front of others. You're going to knock them down a peg or five. Lord Key ain't seen him since, but for real though, where he at? Where he at? He thought he was so clever. What do they call him? The creep squad? They thought He thought he was so clever. I'm like, I can't. Like she's hilarious alone. She's going to make it and do something. So a lot of people might be doubting you right now while you're in the blood, the sweat, and the tears of Cringe Mountain. And you guys are like assessing what's been growing. You're looking at the analytics of everything and checking your seeds and making sure you don't rip them up. You're making sure everything that you planted is a seed of hope, not a seed of fuckery. And as you're checking your harvest and you are checking what's growing, people could be like, ah, that's a weird looking seed. Ah, uh, that's stupid. It doesn't look good. Uh. Nobody asked them. Nobody asked them. You are going to get the last laugh. Trust that. Trust and believe. All right, let's get some advice for you guys. Whoa. The world. That's all you guys need to know. The world. Rewards after hard lessons. You've got all the favor in the world. All the legacy in the world. Everything that you have been putting time and effort into. Yes, there is a new world opening up. Rewards after hard lessons. Those things have not gone, gone unnoticed. Wow. So you guys are moving through a critical stage. You're like, should I stay in this lane or do I need to switch lanes and, and really be for real with myself about how I deserve the best? This is like treating yourself like the original gangster, like the entrepreneur, T treating yourself like you already got that Grammy, like you already got that record deal, treating yourself as you already drive that Benz, as you already bought that house, you already got that license. You feel me? You're going to start talking to people like that. You're going to be getting business cards ready, me, uh, biz, uh, meetings ready. You're going to be getting busy, okay? You guys know what I'm saying. You guys are exploring your options. You're like, I'm at a critical stage. And I could keep being hard on myself and being like, ew, why did I do that? Why did I talk to that? Why did I, why did I believe that? That's okay. It's a part of the process. You guys are about to have some shocking revelations. And surprises, expect the unexpected. I'm so scared for this retrograde, but I feel like I'm going to be here with you guys every step of the way. Every step of the way, we got justice twice. Maybe that's a little bit for you and a little bit for the exes, a little bit for the shitty bosses and a little bit for you, but those skills are getting balanced. There are a lot of people gossiping about you, but that's because they're at the base camp. And you're climbing the mountain. The end. 
All right, guys, don't forget to smash the you know what, hit the bell, duh, and don't forget to drop your favorite affirmation. Mine is, I have the Midas touch, duh, okay? I hope that you guys enjoyed um, the love portion as well. You guys are more than welcome to timestamp the love portion if you want to for the singles and for uh, those in relationships. Oops. And I think that's it. Of my tarot card collection. I don't really have a lot. I got rid of a lot. So I don't have like as many as I used to. Um, because I use a lot of Oracle. And I write a lot of my stuff down. And yeah. But. Let me know what's going on for you guys. What do you think about the cringe concept, the cringe mountain concept, or are you already familiar with it? Let me know when the live stream ends. And I just love reading your guys' messages. It's the best part. The best part. All right, you guys, I'm going to hop out of here. I will see you guys soon, I hope. There are plenty of live streams to check out. If you guys need some chicken noodle soup for the soul, if you need a little giggle or, you know, just some motivation. All right, I'm your bestie on the internet. I am your spiritual advisor. I'm all the things. And just thank you guys. You guys are the best. Bye, Lord Key. Bye, Madeline. Bye, Emmy. Bye, Tay. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Toodles.